from Argus Media, this is Driving Discussions, a podcast series focusing on the forces that affect road fuels globally. Greetings and salutations once again. I'm Jason Metko, spot ticker reporter here at Argus. And on this episode, we're catching up once again with Senior Vice President and Global Head of Oil here at Argus, Mr. Stephen Jones. As we focus on where things stand in the oil markets three quarters of the year in, and how the sector in 2023 will be affected by events still to come to close out this year. Stephen, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on the presentation. We're essentially now at the three-quarter poll in the race of 2022. How are things currently shaping up in the markets? That's a good question, Jason. I guess just by way of introduction on the current topic, oil markets have gone through tightness of supply, uh, strong price support up until the economic headwinds hit and have really pulled the legs out from underneath the outright crude price support levels. But things haven't, as I've mentioned in the past conversations, changed that remarkably. Uh, we still have a energy market in turmoil from the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, there are real consequences and tough trade-offs that we're having to look at as, uh, as the market moves forward. There have been supply cuts, and yet leakage continues from Russia. We have the EU sanctions coming up with trade disruptions and inefficiencies that that will entail. But uh, on top of all this, we still have the climate crisis and incentive of decarbonizing road fuels and things of that nature that are layering in on top of everything. But uh, right now, it's a tug of war between supply, exposures, pending sanctions, and weakening economic support for demand globally of which the U.S. is in better position than most other countries from basic demand support continuing and and the likes of that. But uh, globally, oil demand support uh, is directionally weakening, but still growing positively year on year, uh, which keeps us fixated on the supply side concerns right now. So we've got three months to go here in the calendar year. What's ahead for the rest of this year, Stephen, that could impact oil prices? I think the biggest unknown that is definitionally clear, if that makes sense, is the European Union sanctions for Russian crude oil come December 5th, and then oil products across the EU are sanctioned uh, from Russia February 5th. So for the rest of the year, we already have seen strong pull on diesel requirements, distillates, into Europe uh, to stockpile and begin substituting for natural gas requirements while Europe deals with record high natural gas prices. And that is obviously affecting the diesel prices in the U.S. and keeping the diesel margins very strong relative to gasoline prices. So the EU sanctions are still upon us. Normally, Europe brings in six to 700,000 barrels of Russian diesel. Those imports are down a couple hundred thousand barrels a day. Uh, Right now, the flows are still into Europe, but they can't make do without this supply, and they're going to have to make up for it from elsewhere. And the U.S. is well positioned to either continue supply Latin America and allow other suppliers to bank shot into Europe, or we're going to continue to see a pull on U.S. exports uh, to service both Latin America, which is critical to the whole region there, and and the additional pull into Europe for the most part. He is Senior Vice President, Global Head of Oil Products of Argus Media, Stephen Jones. This is Driving Discussions. Stephen, as you are well aware, this is a podcast focusing on U.S. road fuels. So naturally, how do U.S. road fuels fit into all of this? That's an excellent question. When we look at the U.S. markets, you know, global supply has been tight even as these economic concerns have mounted in the U.S. with inflationary pressures, things of that nature. But we've had, you know, a period of very strong refinery runs with a lot of, um, I guess, rationale placed on the limited refining capacity that supported gasoline prices through the, the summer. Well, that that was we've talked about that in the past. That's a bit of a misnomer. Gasoline prices are down and refinery runs are still high. And yet we're not building inventories. Uh, the market price time structure, meaning the futures prices for gas and diesel, are still backward dated, meaning lower price than the prompt market. And as such, refiners are leery about building inventory if the future prices are going to be lower than today's prices to restock and have 
inventory to carry through any potential disruptions is a large financial exposure to carry something at a high price today that will be lower priced in future months. And so we are still continuing to see low inventory levels across the marketplace for gasoline and diesel. Uh, where we are in the current situation is strong runs, large export volumes, uh, both the gasoline and diesel, and the inability, or I should say, the lack of financial incentive and risk taking to restock. And we're moving into hurricane season, which hopefully won't be all that disruptive, but there are strikes in Europe and other operating problems that have manifested itself across the U.S. and a variety of markets that, um, that continue to create exposure and help prop prices. And as you and I discussed, we're also moving into the seasonal transition uh, to winter-grade gasolines, which are more expensive, generally speaking, for refiners to reconfigure blends for the winter grades. Uh, but we're past the strong demand period as well. So hopefully those two pieces directionally offset. Uh, the crack spreads, the margins for gasoline are relatively low compared to diesel and don't expect relief on the diesel side near term. We'll get you out on this this time around, Stephen. Understand that there are some things domestically, internationally, that are going to be happening in the next couple of months that will affect the markets going into next year. Can you elaborate on those, sir? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the EU sanctions really kick in near the end of the year, so it's a current consternation and problem to be worked, but it will have a price impact through the balance of the front end next year. Uh, we also have the G7 price cap, which is basically agreed to by the G7 finance ministers, but it has to go through the EU um, you know, approval process of what some of the mechanics of that will look like. So the G7 price cap, you know, is still out there hovering over the market that is intended to try to maintain Russian supplies in the market without benefiting the revenue flow back to Russia. Um, and so can you have your cake and eat it too in this case? Well, it remains to be seen. But if we back up and look at the U.S. in particular, uh, we do have the Inflation Reduction Act, which is propagating forward that it's supposed to lower, you know, greenhouse gas emissions by 40 percent through 2030. OK, so that's all long term. But what's the near term issue? Really, the near term issue is that we have the extension of the biodiesel tax credits uh, to 2024. And we're also going to see the introduction of new tax credits for sustainable aviation fuel, SAF, as it's known, that could range between a dollar and a quarter per gallon to 1.75 dollar uh, 75 per gallon, depending on what feedstock is being used. So there's some biofuels and other incentives that are part of the IRA that are coming down the pike. The total funding is 369 billion dollars that'll take place over the years ahead. So we'll start to see that impact the market uh, immediately in the next year or so. But we also have the propagation of low carbon fuel standards across many states. California's passing rulemaking to start in 2023 to increase targets and trim some fuels from the program. We're also seeing concerns about the large inventory of low carbon fuel credits and its pricing, uh, even as the CI targets tighten. Uh, but we also got, you know, Oregon plan to extend their plans for LCFS programs through 2035. Washington's passed their clean fuels program in April, now finalizing their, their program. You know, Canada passed their clean fuels standards and, and are looking at, you know, allowing credits to be generated from July of this year. And uh, many other states are progressing forward. So this smorgasbord, board, almost a balkanization of what LCFS programs look like, are weighing heavily on the road fuels markets and the relative price and compliance steps for the year ahead. And more near term is the EPA's plan to release the renewable fuel standard targets for 2023. We're supposed to get a first view of that November 16th of this year. And within that, uh, rumor has it and pretty much uh, confirmed by inside sources that, you know, the ERENs uh, are going to be part of that release and get a first view of the market of what that might look like. So everything about, you know, renewable diesel, renewable natural gas, RNG, 
uh, how that plays into road fuel credits and the LCFS programs and the renewable fuel standards are all moving parts. But fundamentally, uh, the refining system looks pretty secure for the balance into next year, 2023. Uh, road fuels demand, depending on the economy, should still be pretty stable in the U.S. And the incentive to continue to increase the amount of biofuels blending uh, both renewable diesel into uh, the distillate market and we're at a blend wall with ethanol, but other pathways for carbon intensity improvements are being defined through these LCFS programs that will allow more competition in the broad road fuels supply will we'll play into it. But outright prices uh, remain to be uh, a, a wide pendulum of potential outcomes. Directionally, I think the market will see firmer prices into next year uh, when we get past this soft patch of the economic headwinds and we ultimately see what the EU sanctions foretell on the balance of the global supply demand fundamentals. He is a bevy and a treasure trove of information. That's why we have him on the presentation. He is Senior Vice President, Global Head of Oil Products at Argus, Stephen Jones. As always, sir, we appreciate the time, and we look forward to our next get-together. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jason. Good talking to you. And again, a great many thanks to Stephen for joining us. And that wraps up another edition of Driving Discussions, a production of Argus Media. Reminder to check out the previous episodes in our series. And for more information on Argus's global refined products coverage, make sure to visit argusmedia.com forward slash oil dash products.